Okay, from them, um, I bring warm greetings to Una. Very, very excited on this day, the 13th day of July, 2022. Um, a very special program. They say no same day na salon they bring about the same thing. And I say this because not to for say we the same thing, but the activities in the country are so many that every time there is something new for talk about. This is why potentially authorities that can get away with so many, many, many things then. Many, many things I want for Asha Una. Many, many things. Um, um, as I speak to Una today, which is the 13th day of um, um, July 2022, on a very spe special program, which is proportional representation versus first-past-the-post system, and something which has been debated in the, in the House of Parliament, not only in the House of Parliament, it's the talk of the town both domestically and internationally. And for that we weigh in inside, it's a privilege for some of them um, um, news outlet there where we get. And from them, once again, I want to remind you now, this is now the TNN TV media empire. And we will talk to you today. Now, my name is Prince Emil Kroman. We get a very special guest who I will introduce shortly. And like I said, I want to talk about the PR system and somebody will understand the both system with it in contention at this time. So keep tuned and una shape this broadcast to una fambulem and padi them and una wider network. And this is the TNN Media Empire. I am Prince Emil Kroger. Right, like I've been saying, Fambulem, I mean, the hour has come. Every beginning has got an end. Every end has definitely got a beginning. And like I say again, um, I did in my casual form, and I just want to let you know that I'm wearing my AC Milan t shirt. This is um, 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 in an earlier stage, I used to follow George Weah very, very much. That's the president of the Republic of Liberia. And I hope for fly to Liberia soon, where I hope for meet him and hopefully he will give me an interview. And I go get on this shirt, AC Milan, where hopefully go a pen in signature too. So that's what I'm wearing tonight for this particular interview. And I put the Kenko hat. Okay? But like I'm say on a more serious note, right now, as we talk now, Sierra Leone, there is a conversation ongoing. And the conversation is so serious that at some point it becomes toxic. Toxic in the sense that. Once there's disagreement, instead of we disagree for agree, it will turn out for be something else. But I will leave that aside and want to introduce me guest at this point in time. We it don't appear on this platform, I believe, once or twice, but this is over been a period of time. And anytime we we'll get this man and this young man, let's be honest, for those of whom are waiting on the listen to Ram, is a very special young man, very open with the facts. And they know exactly what he did do, and he leads the CSO organization. And ladies and gentlemen, at this particular point in time, I want to welcome Mr. Marcos Albangus El Haj. Marcos, come to the program. Maybe you uh, can tell family a little bit. Yeah, thank you very much for this program. Um, I appreciate it so much, you know, for all the kind of programs, yeah, because it brings we come into. You know, a forum we are in where they contribute to your little way for enable people for make them actually understand this whole concept about the happenings in the parliament as well as the issue of proportional representation. You know, so like I appreciate the fact that you actually invite me that I will try the level best for actually juxtapose the two systems that is proportional representation and first past the post system. So that's so far. Yeah, thank you very much, Emma. Marcos, again, for your kind sentiment, but equally so, I really appreciate you because that's my constraints and the challenges. Here you are with your lovely um, face, smiling despite the difficulties, but at least they keep the country at the back of your mind. And this I appreciate, and I have no doubt that the community of um, people, both domestically and um, internationally, will really appreciate you for this. 
But going straight into the issue, Marcus, um, there's been plenty of talk, and that involves you as well. You, you know, as um, um, a CSO, you've been doing your due diligence by weighing in into something where the Sierra Leonean people them obviously need to be aware of, and you they try for create that awareness day. But before we delve deep into the issue for today, can you please break down for we this new argument over the year between proportional representation and first past the post? What really is it? Because I believe so part of you could say that for that family will understand the difference between the two and which one you think say legitimately represent the interest of the people. What was the difference between the two? Man? Yeah, um, thank you very much. Um me that the executive director of Citizens Forum for Democratic Accountability, and with a focus on citizenship and democracy education. So um, proportional representation and first past the post, now electoral systems. In other words, you call them a voting pattern, where um, the way they, they use all over the world. The two major ones that we in the use now most countries, the proportional representation and first past the post. But which are then two systems there are? Proportional representation and first pass the post. In the first place, proportional representation for shots, we call a PR. First pass the post, we call a simple majority or simple plurality system. And first pass the post based on um, single constituent representation or multi member constituency. I'll go over them again. Um, First past the post system, na multiple <coughs> constituency basis. Why is first past the post na single member constituency? So as a result of that, these two systems, we don't use them as alone, you know, not to the first time this. For example, first past the post system, we don't they use them since independence. Even before independence, I want to say, we don't they use the first past the post system. Then from independence, we don't use them up to the, even during the one party era. That is the Tawi Salon, we get the Republic. Then we don't use them up to um, this particular period. For example, we'll, I just want to give you a little background so that people are able to understand. Um, in the first place, we need for, <laughs> yes. I mean, the first place, we need for no say, first pass the post, that a system where Salon be not the use far back. From independence. The only time where the system will get interruption in 1996 and 2002 elections, this we all know now be because of the war. Um, even in 2001, we then get for this slight amendment in the constitution so that we use them in 2002. But immediately after 2002, the concept of first party post was abandoned, you know, because of several reasons. But I will discuss the reasons then. A part of the, the disadvantages of um, the, the the proportional representation, so that the only period that we we don't use proportional representation at this country as well. Then first past the post, as I mentioned, we don't use them from ten since independence. Then the only two thousand and two and nineteen ninety six. Now we don't use them. We use them um, two thousand and seven. We use them twenty twelve. We also use them twenty eighteen. So first past the post system now now a system of but like a voting pattern, we are in people in the votes based on multi-member constituency. When you say multi-member constituency, we they refer to a constituency we made up of several constituencies, say a district block system. Say, for example, we, um, on that first pass and um, on that proportional representation, the voting system, we don't vote for a single individual. Like how we do them under the first pass dispose system. The system under proportional representation in the first place, a complex, a expensive, then then they call them chaotic in some societies, they say it's very chaotic because of certain reasons. So that a system of um the electoral system, we are in people and they vote on a list basis. Um, say, for example, you get the APC, you get the SLPP, you get other political parties. Then. Make we say freedom, for example, under proportional representation, all political parties, they, they present a list or submit a list to the National Electoral Commission. And um, say, if now 25 members of parliament we need, now the Western area, say freedom in particular, 
we need 25 members of parliament based on the population. If you look at the proportion of the population in the first place, then the votes, and the voting, then they look at that as valid votes. Then they calculate them by the population where they, now the community or, or the future as a whole. Then thereafter, they look at the percentage of vote cast. So now, as I give example, we get 25 members of parliament, for example, in Africa. We expect every political party in the contest for give 25 names, for submit 25 names. The APC will submit 25 names. The SLP will submit 25 names. C4C, for example, yes, will submit 25 names. Um, also, NGC will submit 25 names. Then go into the votes. The party, the Legi, uh, um, then we get a threshold. We get 1,000 people, for example. Out of the 1,000 people in Africa, they need 25 people. They not submit the 25 names. Based, based on the proportion of vote cast for a particular political party, now so then they get the representation of parliament. The more a political party, let me go back to 1996 election. Uh, if I would say it was based on um, the entire country, right? Then 2002, then based on, on this state. If you find out, say, you get certain political parties like the SLPP, the PDP, um, then we get the IS, the UNPP, where you have a smart party. These were the three major political parties. At that particular time, the APC was, APC was not strong. So as a result, APC may only get five representatives. Then in 2002 elections, Johnny Paul gets in party, right? Then gets one member of the parliament. So based on the valid vote cast and the proportion of votes, now they divide, they calculate them before a particular party they get membership. Now we talk about the first past the post system. Under the first past the post system, that is a system we are in you they get various political parties with various candidates. But under this system, you become a member of parliament. Make I just give example. Let's say in Freetown, we get 1,000 people in Africa. Mm -hmm. Of the 1,000 people in Africa, we get four political parties. Make we say we get APC, we get SLPP, we get NGC, and we get C4C. Just for uh, an example, make we say out of the 1,000 valid voters in Africa, make we say um, 300 people then vote for SLPP. Right? The, then the, out of the 600, make we say 250, for example, vote for APC, right? 300 plus the 250, they give you 550, right? And after the, 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 the remaining of 450, let's say the C4C gets 250, then NGC gets, say, 200. In this situation, the party or the candidate will get the highest number of votes, even if that particular um, candidates they lead by one vote. A simple majority system automatically that possibly they become a winner. So at this we need to know we need to know about proportional representation and post pass the post system. Under proportional representation, people and the votes on a list system. That make when we look at proportional representation in a very representation, you get the the the, the, the voting list system. You also get other types the way that they practice. But um, in Sierra Leone, like the district block system, under the district block system, each political party submits a particular number. Say, for example, if there are 25, we need, and emphasize, if there are 25 members, we need for the parliament. Which will happen, the SNP will submit 25 names, the APC 25 names, other political parties, they submit 25 names. But among them, they look at the proportion of vote cast then they calculate them to the number of votes where a particular political party gets. So based on that, in the final say most political parties they get representation in that situation. But it gets young problems. Why is first party post system? Now a system we are in, it's a simple majority system. Now a single co they vote on single constituency basis. Various candidates they contest, one one candidate for a particular constituency. 
Then the candidate will get the highest number of votes and they become a winner. I think in simple terms, now that for able to understand between proportional representation and first pass the post system. Now, you have to look at waiting actually is suitable for Sierra Leone. In your analysis, you know, I don't look at the two system. I don't do a thorough study. I don't do a thorough analysis of the two. I find out, say, these two systems are used almost all over the world. But among them, two thirds of the world countries, they use first past the post than proportional representation. Even Sierra Leone, we try proportional representation. But because of a complex nature, you know, then we get for abandoner. First pass the post system, which make me the um propose say we use first pass the post system. One because a system we common among the people. Now a system we familiar to the people. Now a system we very simple among the people. So as a result of that, it's easier than we use proportional representation. We very, very complex. Even for explain proportional representation, it's it challenging. You know, even the politicians. Where they make noise, they talk, some of them are not able to describe with simple proportional representation. Right? So, so as a result of that, let me do something where yeah. so Marcos, you go get for turn and not say yes, you watch the program simultaneously. So it, 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 it interfere. Okay. You, know, yeah. you can watch the video but turn the volume down to zero. So um, um, it will stop the interference. Many thanks for that. I think that was an extensive explanation of all. And um, even to the layman, I think you've done justice. But during your explanation or your breakdown between the two systems, you equally say um, you go lack for explain why it was abandoned. In other words, the other system where you seem to have umbrage with, they don't try them before. They've tried it, I think, after the, the war or so, before the war, something like that, you say. It worked well, I believe. But why now there is a problem for that particular system? I ask you this question because even though you don't explain the advantages and disadvantages, the point what I try to make, Marcos, or ask is, if it been work well then, that is if you accept say it been work well then, when and try them, what is the problem now? Um, proportional representation not being work well at that particular period. In fact, we get an amendment of the constitution in 2001. And they use that only in 2002 because there is a slight difference between the 1996 proportional representation and the 2001 proportional representation or 2002 election proportional representation, right? Because it was modernized from the 2000 and from the 1996 to 2002 elections, it was modernized into a district block system. Now, the system actually did fail. And because it failed, now that makes the abandonment. And one reason which make it fail, right? Now, because one, I mentioned initially, say it was so complex, a very difficult to understand. Let me, yes. Very difficult to understand. So as a result, because it's been complex and very difficult to understand, experts, you know, even Chijan Kaba, we make sure they the amend that in 2002, decide for Pulam in 2007 elections. So as a result of that, it was not successful. Let me just explain one of the reasons which make the abandonment. One, it gives rise to coalition. And when you get Carry on. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. I've been mean, just to say, um, let me let me just say this quickly. I've been mean, just to say, yeah. Marcos, you've got all the time today. Yeah. It's almost like a teaching process. Yeah. Because this is something of interest to you. And by yeah. virtue of your profession, your career, and what you the head, it's so important for let you explain this to the Sierra Leonean people and to the international community as well. So what I was saying is you've got all the time for break and down to the nitty-gritty of the entire issue, yeah. so that when we left here today, there will be no ifs okay. and no buts. Okay. So, okay. Um, as I talk, you, if I can understand the question proper, um, proportional representation was introduced 
and during the period it seemed to work well. So waiting now the argument around them as to when they try for revive and back. Now some of the things in this way I explain. One, I don't talk about how complex the system was. It's been very, very difficult for many people to actually comprehend them. But one of the basic things about this question of um, proportional representation in terms of uh, shortcomings, now that proportional representation, they make governments weak. It is weakening a government in the sense that it gives rise to coalition. It's not easy for make a government succeed without you know, coalition with other political parties. And once there is a coalition, in the final say the government, the party, we don't kind of power, a manifesto where like it be not promised to the people, they not go able for implement them. Because once there is a coalition with smaller political parties for making succeed, that particular party they instead of the endeavor for make sure say you 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 incorporate in policies then. So once you incorporate in policies then it they divert from your own policy. And once you divert from the policy, it they make you as a government weak. So it may create give rise for make a government strong, like way we get first past the post system. On the first past the post system, it they find out the way governments they succeed, it they succeed on its own. And once the party succeed on its own, it able for actually implement in party programs, in, part, in campaign promises, it is able, the party will able for implement them. But under proportional representation, it's not easy to make a political party. That are one of the challenges in that way at March Jan Kababi gets when he win 2002 elections, right? Even 1996 election, the 1996 election, there was coalition with the PDP, right? And as a result of that, you part, the party not able to appoint all the members as ministers. So, for example, we find out say there were a good number of PDP members because the PDP supported the SLPP at that particular period. And once the PDP supported the SLPP, it was a kind of a coalition. And in that coalition, the, the SLPP began to give some press, uh, um, um, ministerial positions, you know, to the PDP. So as a result of that, the PDP said, at the time of campaign, it also gets in your programs. It gets in your manifesto. It gets in campaign promises, where we don't take to the people then. So as a result of that, those campaign promises, now they're not coming to agreement with the SLPP by then. Once they come into ag agreement, the government will get for every, it must it must say include some of the programs them of uh, of um, the PDP, for example. So this is uh, we'll talk about 2023. Now, if we get a particular party we go win the election, they become a member, uh, it, it win the election and take over the president, the presidency. The aspect of implementation will be very difficult. Now that makes some um, philo uh, some people in describe them, some political scientists and say it is chaotic. It can make parliament very, very chaotic, you know, because members of parliament, they are already you get different political parties, but smaller political parties they were not too strong. But because of the fact say it's it is a proportional representation, they don't get one or two seats in the parliament. And once they get one or two seats in the parliament, and they don't go into coalition. With the main government, with the central government, what can happen? There is always issues of a um, problem because the small party starts to go talk, say, ah, we're not going to support now this. So the big government, the wicked government. Another aspect of proportional representation, way very, very bad, right? Although it was used at that particular period, way bad. We, uh, we make the abandoner for the first pass the post system, but the fact say there is lack of accountability now when we talk about democracy we talk about good governance one of the, the, the elements of democracy or determinant of democracy and good governance that the question of accountability and stewardship under proportional representation the aspect of accountability is missing because the appointment of members of parliament right or the election of members of parliament is not based on the constituents Despite the fact that, that the constituents, if not, let me say the electorate, let me put it because we're talking about proportional representation here. Let make us say the electorate. Now, the electorate, they, they only votes for an MP when they go to parliament on the on a district block system. So members of parliament, it's difficult to make them accountable to the electorate. Rather, they will be very accountable to the hierarchy of the party. That is to say the executive, because that the executive appoint them before they contest election. 
So the, for make you become a member of parliament under proportional representation, you are at the mercy of the party hierarchy or the executive. And at least, say for example, let I me mean, say because um, there are 25 people and one are free talk, right? If your party make your name the number one, two, three, four, five, or up to ten, probably you get chance for win and become a member of parliament. But if you name another one, another two, another three, they put you in name 20, 22, 23. Make us say, for example, APC and the SFP. We all know say that impeccable facts say APC can always dominate that return. Make we say APC don't get in 25 members, SFP get 25 members. F SFP, of course, will get representation at parliament. But the question is, the conflict they arise within the party as to the scale of preference of the names. Because if you name, if you name for SFP, now if you name the up to five, you get chance for, to ten for become a member of parliament. But if you name the ten, up to 15 to 20, 25, the possibility for me to become a member of parliament will be very difficult. So because of this, they find out the candidates in defense, right, for make the name the one, two, three, five. For in the case of the SFP, for example, or make we say that boo, if the APC man, if they want 10 candidates that boo, then APC party submit a list. If the, the person they the number one get chance for becoming a member of parliament. So that so struggle go there, you know, conflict go there within the party, it can lead to division, it can lead to chaos, and it can even lead, it, it, it can make certain people that left the party out of grievance. You say, well, instead of this man put me name one, two, three, they're going to put me name 25, or they put me name 10. So they need 10 members of parliament. It can make that individual they left the party, okay, or even join the other party as far as they promise and say, they're going to put your name in the first five. So you get to okay, you will succeed. So as a result of that, in the final stage, um, members of parliament, they're not going to be accountable to the, to the electorates, but they will rather be accountable to the party hierarchy because as far as they're ready or willing for become a political lantern we don't go regulate with the party hierarchy and then dance to the tune of the music play they will always remain for the parliament even if they become ruthless you know <laughs> even if they become ruthless they will the parliament they become ruthless they didn't contribute nothing but as far as the party you know then they ask the, the the good books of the party and they're ready for dance you know, so the so the strings, the regulates, you know, like we lantern can perform, we lantern can, can play. You don't say you get strings that really regulate, then the lantern they perform, you know, that kind of stuff then they so as fast as you're ready for do so, you go day that the good books of the party that point you. So you don't get you're not accountable to the people, you can't even see you 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 constitu your constituent or uh, maybe you say you electorate, you didn't see them, you're not responsible to them, you don't want nobody. So that one aspect then they another problem with this proportional um representation actually get that the fact say it a give um, um green lights to the party where they have power or the party where where where, where elect you it a give green lights to the government for making you know, all listen to the views of the people you know because under constituency there is possibility they can meet and talk but it's not easy for me to actually listen to that. So it gets it gets a lot a lot of issues around that where make them very very difficult. You also look at the aspects um, we are in uh, this question of coalition. You know, this people will talk about because as you have arguments with proponents of proportional representation, they talk about the fact say you will get more members of party from other political parties and all that. Even that, that is very very difficult. It's very difficult. You know, inside means say you can get a percent. Because not to the country as it was in 1996, but it based on district level, and as far as it is on district level, it will be very difficult for smaller political parties to make them survive under the system. So as a result of that, you know, me own view, not I don't take that selfishly. I don't get intention for going to parliament, and not the intention for going to parliament. But the fact is, we look at the country for future posterity. You know, if we take, we can't take a political, we can't take a political system. A voting system we introduce them then at the end of the day there is there is lack of accountability and other issues and it can be very very serious i get a lot of things then i don't do a lot of write-offs about them i don't talk about the fairy tale of proportional representation we mean say that like cock and bull story you understand it will look at actually you know effective you know efficient i don't write about um the the, the flaws of proportional representation you know it gets a lot and lot of issues then now let's just look at them um, the fairy tale of proportional representation will start identify specific 
you know, issues, certain problems that we associated with proportional representation. And that makes we need to think wisely. We have to be very careful. We don't allow members of parliament to do what they want to do. Because they are there representing us, right? In as much as we, we don't go meet them, they don't allow me to go and give me no contribution. So as a result of that, we get people away we don't elect where they represent you in a parliament. And in as much as they are in parliament, right, they get responsibility for make sure they then do what they right, as provided in section 73 of the constitution, that is the Iranian constitution, Act number no. 6, 1981, where say then they make laws, parliament, they empower parliament for make law for the peace, the security, and the government of governance of Sierra Leone. So as a result of that, then for do that at the interest of the people of this country as well. And once that is done, we don't get much of challenges. It will be very easy. Come with a system, way simple, way not expensive. You know, as they talk about the, another aspect of proportional representation, and the fact that this issue of, of um, the, um, 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 by elections, right? In order, there is a list. Under this list, if you get if 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 a party gets ten members in a parliament at a particular district, the one person die. Then they come up for come look at people and way for go contest to. What then they do? They just look at the list. They post them in the number eleven. Then they can number ten for big representation. All that weakens um, the issue of um, 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 accountability. We not really good. Under proportional representation, we also not good for Sierra Leone. So these are some of the, the, the aspects. Then so far, we at least at the outline. And um, if you get to that question, I still they come. And I therefore add more of the issues and more of the pro uh, uh, the problems with proportional representation, and which will make me the frown at some completely. I shed eyebrows on proportional representation. Oh yeah, absolutely. Many, many thanks, Mr. Bangura. And ladies and gentlemen, for those of you just joining the program here this evening, I am speaking to none other but Mr. Marcos Bangura, the executive um, and director for um, the CSO called the Citizens Forum for Democracy and, Emp and Empowerment, the C4D, um, in short. I mean, um, <laughs> the brother has made so many things so clear that even for me, me, we suppose for the ask the questions, I'm mesmerized because it's a kind of learning curve for me. Just heard so much, you know, here yeah, in the space of minutes, something which uh, possibly I will have taken like hours, if not days, for me to learn. And I'm I'm thankful for that. I notice the number where they watch the program are down, but obviously subsequently the numbers are going to rise, even if not on the live version. But just for remind viewers them. Um, we get about 60 people away they watch, not only on Facebook, because the program is being simultaneously streamed to YouTube as well. So we get about 60 people. Apparently, they in the middle, 30 each. But that's low by the platform in performance. But notwithstanding, we have get Mr. Marcos Bangura here tonight. And this is quite important. And we get so much more for go into. But just before we go into the nitty-gritty, of waiting for Mulengo, kind of interested in more and more. Mr. Bangura, with all you've said, I wonder whether there is a difference between public the public elections bill. In other words, I won't go into parliament now because it's not something of interest to you as well and you don't need to touch on this issue very, very much. So the public elections bill of 2022 and the Constitu Constitutional Amendment Act, also of 2022, I believe, which has been deliberated in the wells of parliament as at this point. I wonder whether you can weigh in on this and whether there is a difference between what you try to describe at length earlier on or whether they are all of the same but within a different context as to what is happening exactly in the country right now. Yeah, I am. Me, we don't make a very clear say, it's not bad for actually. Um, amend the laws. Nothing bad about that because um, society they, they, they transform as a result of the fact that society transforms. There is a need for make we amend the laws for big change in times. So as a result of that, I don't get any issue. The only question is, or the only, the only problem is, where will they amend the laws? We for ensure say we amend the laws within the limit of the law. You know, 
Well, for me to say we amend the law in conformity with international best practice, we for make sure say we amend the law in conformity with the constitution itself, as well as the lots and lots of um, um, policies then we get in place, as well as the fact say the government itself don't make a lot of promises outside um Sierra Leone to the international community, as well as in parliament for uphold. You know, the principles of democracy, of good governance, of constitutionalism. So as a result of that, there is nothing bad about the laws. There is nothing bad about it, right? Amending the laws. Now, when you look at the question of um, um, the public election bill, in other words, the proposed um, public election act of 2022, when you look at that and also the constitutional amendment act um a constitution that something was secret secret in the sense that um once it is written especially we'll get a written constitution not of something we can just church and that made the constitution make provisions of entrenched clauses you get certain clauses where you don't just pass as ordinary laws right you they pass them according to the way where they prescribe by the constitution now, so you the person you get others we keep pass a simple way as we see we yesterday um we find out say they pass certain then do certain amendments now the constitution yes there the one that's not to entrench clauses you get certain laws that we need even referendum you know you need for take them to the people then for make they look at them and decide say this thing is good or this thing is not good you vote you say you want for vote so the constitutional amendment um bill where they before parliament you get specific areas then where it need for be amended right for example you get areas that section 32 subsection 2 and subsection 8 where they do amendments and uh, subsection 2 and um, section 32 subsection 2 and subsection 8. then side they also where they deal with them um, the appointment of the electoral commissioner as well as the the the, the how it remove the electoral commissioner but one thing yesterday we we be the money me so much in the discussion of parliaments we are not see that look at not so merely the question of um, gross misconduct conduct or behavior misbehavior because these were the areas that we are deliberating on right i've been so worried about the powers of the president and not merely the powers of the president and um, if i don't say the prescription wouldn't do as to how you remove the chief electoral commissioner mm -hmm. Right, we embedded in the in the in the in the in that particular mm -hmm. aspect. They also insert section 137 of the constitution. And section 137, they talk about how you remove a judge. You know, how you remove a judge. So people are they don't talk about that. Members of parliament almost they all not talk about that, right? How you remove a judge, and they don't look at the entire section 137, they look at section. 137, um, they look at certain uh, uh, and subsections, uh, for example, five, subsection five, subsection six, and subsection seven. Then sections they did, they talk about how you remove uh, the judge. But if they look at entirely section 137, they will not take the entire section 137. But why in the first place, the, the, the public election bill, right? And only look at, it only selects that particular section, right? Section 137, subsection 5, subsection 6, and subsection 7. Why not the entire situation? But another fear is the fact that these same sections, right, section 137, for the position of, for the auditor general, it's the same thing applies, right? But what we see at the end of the day, even when it is written, it is in the constitution, it is entrenched, right? But at the end of the day, what's happened, we see, the, 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 the chief and um, the, the auditor general being suspended before they even form a tribunal before she was investigated right so the fear now is the president gets so much power there is all possibility that at, if, at the nick of time right the president can suspend the chief electoral commissioner and if he suspend the chief electoral commissioner right then 
we get for we get we it, it, it's a serious issue it's a serious issue and that was what i was expecting members of parliament especially the opposition to actually discuss yesterday right that this issue not only the issue of misconduct okay um public election and talk about gross misconduct 2012 right and also uh the constitution talk about misbehavior right and the public elections act the proposed public elections act 2022 talk about misconduct they pull out from gross misconduct to misconduct but it was good yesterday that um, um the opposition be able for actually influence that particular thing they add the word gross to that right we are subsection two right subsection five now right in they talk about how they remove them right not only the mr gross misconduct i mean right but also the fact that one section 137 has been inserted and certain section in section 137 right was 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 was, was cherry picked why those sections were cherry picked what about the other functions then we uh, and, and with the constitution provide or certain clauses that with the constitution provide so now one aspect that they were very very serious we at least we for look at presidents don't forget excessive powers the growing powers of the president right in create crisis in the sense that if the, if the, if the user ultra vice or say for example we get we get we get at that particular time parliament's no day right and let's say for example where the president is dissatisfied with the chief electoral commissioner or a commissioner where he's dissatisfied then you say you call and gross misconduct then you decide, you decide for suspender you suspend up they appoint another person in that place day so they're very close but you tell the member they don't call results and once they call results they subject it into investigation just like what happened with the chief uh, with, with the auditor general they're subject and to to investigation that's it power had already transfer you know if not transfer the party transfer so as a result of that once you are president you did a power you influence everything you understand which we call political interference we 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 not good when we talk in terms of um, 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 governance it's not it's not it's not really good right because that is an aspect of that so but still still um the issue of proportional representation we all know say it was amended um in section 33 um in 2001 and of course it was included in the public elections act 2022 proposed public elections act it was included and so we surprised yesterday um the speaker of parliament say in fact they're not going to discuss that because it is already there and that again is a big question what does that mean what is that the implication of that does that mean the, the the pr system has been withdrawn or is it an alternative system to the first pass the post so if it is an alternative system to the first pass the post there is all possibility that at the nick of time six months to election right they will decide for we come the proportional representation take effect but again the government will take into consideration of the fact say it is not only on the grounds that um, they are going to get um and vote in the western area i think that that is that is it APC said will get votes now certain areas then because it is based on threshold it's now one thousand people i would say we say um i think as if now ten thousand people there we say anybody get one thousand like threshold forget one we get one thousand by a threshold of a particular percentage forget a member of parliament so there is all possibility that they can also get one or two members and a lot of independent candidates they're not able to understand say this system they ostracize them completely because where it based on constituency even though you contest election like that particular constituency and when you contest that constituency day perhaps out of protest votes you'll be voted for but when it comes to district block system on a proportional representation you don't go survive you can't survive because now on the district that they put your name for make you contest where you know go all that's easy for you as an individual and with a threshold yeah, so, man, just a, just a, just a quick, just a quick one, just a quick one, because i just try for follow a catch up in terms of the district block system um it was it was tried and tested prior to the or was used during the 2007 elections correct um, it was used in 1996 and 2002 elections. So it was introduced, yes, tested and abandoned. Why, why, right? why, why, why was it? At the was, of this program, if you promise me, you go explain why this system 
was abandoned. Why was it abandoned since it was yes. tested? The during the war, was was abandoned. Tested. Yes. yes, the system was abandoned because it was discovered that it would be very difficult for it to survive. Um, especially for a government to succeed. That is why I, 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 I mentioned the aspect of, um, of, of, of coalition, right? If I know in 1996, the SAPP survived through a coalition. And under that coalition that was established, the minor political parties then, they get influence, they be assertive. So the government not be able for undertake in campaign promises at that particular time. Then, because of the fact that it was expensive, and also it make Parliament chaotic, you know, Parliament there was always chaos in Parliament. And if you introduce a back, there is possibility for Parliament for be chaotic, you know. Then also because of the fact that members of Parliament not be accountable again, they don't care. But 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 the people then. So Pakabasa have been tired with the whole thing because as a member of Parliament, if I be accountable to the people then whatever cause, but proportional representation kill that completely. On a proportional representation, there is no way, you know, where a member of parliament will be accountable to the people. Then. And once they're not accountable to the people, then they render the government for be weak. So these are the factors why, in fact, it was decided that, imagine, now, now 2001, in, in 1996, they say, okay, because of the war, you know, under the Junta government, if, and that is the NPRC, Junta crazy way made in existence, you find out, say, the constitution was suspended. Right now, all the way back about come now in the constitution was revived, was, was, was revived if you like. Right, so as a result of that, it's it time to say President Bill left proportional representation because he was the head of state by then. And now, under the account with proportional representation, where they elect Jan Kaba na power. So after that, even Jan Kaba used them for modernizing because at 2002, members say in 2002 they declare the war done done, so there was there was still threat of war. So as a result of that, it was decided that the user back. But imagine it was Jan Kaba that made it to be amended. And it was the same Jan Kaba that did not use it in 2007. You know, because of advice from international, okay. the international community, okay. even, in, even in England, there is post past the post system. You okay. see, Marco, so it was Marco, abandoned. Let me, let me, let me, let me ask you this then. Um, we've got few months to elections. And I've been watching you, I've been watching your talks, your workshops, you know, you're very keenly. And I know say you take umbrage to certain things. One of the things that way you take umbrage to now this very system where you speak against. In other words, um, even if they were to bring it into being, the consulta consultation process was not being observed. In other words, they don't bring and come to the people yeah. in the form of a referendum. So that the people in a participatory yeah. democracy would determine the kind of way forward. But this was never done yes. anyway. So my question to you, yes. Marcos, mm -hmm. now we come up from the statistical because you've been very brilliant, absolutely brilliant on that. And this is what I love. But on a bit of a politics now, it's a few months to elections. Why then the all the forcing and fighting? around the introduction of a system which was not in place we had another system in other words they want change that system then. what's your take on this why yes um this this is very very important because the president or the government kind of power in 2018 um four years long passed by and we get less than one year now to the election and yet we are talking about introducing you know, a new voting system. And this alone, they shed, make me shed eyebrows on it. Then also, they make people... Okay. I think we don't begin to observe. Um, I think we don't begin to observe. They, they get suspicion and distrust, you know, over the system. Because why not for amend, yes, for introduce this particular system, yes, so, but it was not done at that particular period, right? So the big question is why at this particular period that this particular thing has been introduced? You see, at this they make you know it don't, it don't create a lot of problems. Now let's look at the situation. It's it was one year, almost one year to election, where they introduced this system at parliament for pre-legislative hearing. But except we are 
we no want to go by democracy. You know, we they come by we can we they, we they say we want democracy and we they say we can power by democracy, but when we are in democracy, we don't practice democracy because there is this issue of intrigues, this issue of um, manipulations and all that. The reason we make a decision now because in a democracy there is the question of consensus. Consensus very very important. Um, this very very important issue of proportional representation. One thing where the government before don't do, the government before don't educate the people them about proportional representation. The the, the because you get what they call popularization. Therefore, don't popularize this issue of proportional representation. Then before don't do nationwide consultation. You know, consult stakeholders consult other people engage the people through tv through the radio what that means say this system will, will, will be not the practice we want change that put it on our views but i'll tell you i am a very active and vibrant um political activist as well i am very very much interested on political issues but there was never a time i had but there was never a time I was invited on this issue of proportional representation. That's not ever be, right? Because if we don't all have certain areas, you know, then even if the constitution says this and that, as far as it is good for the nation, take proportional representation, take it to the people, say, in the form of referendum, say, but well, this tears what happens. Make it be a referendum. For example, Shaka still be handed over power to Momo. But Momo be one situation wherein he was elected. So the issue was taken to the people in a referendum. Momo be for long as well as fast as he don't get power, he continued. But the issue was taken to the people. So that was a referendum. So equally, would they, would they expect to say, this issue be for long being. People that only can know about the question of proportional representation in the pre-legislative hearing. I do a piece before the pre-legislative hearing where this way where, where the clerk of parliament may come out with a, a notice for the pre-legislative hearing for the two bills that is the uh, um, um, public elections bill as well as the political party registration bill where another area back of a very big question the political party registration commission under the the the, the that particular act they want to change them from commission to uh, um, um, to authority, sort of, right? A regulatory authority, sort of. And when you change them to that, they don't give more powers to the commission itself. And you they weaken political parties. It is not good. So the constitution, in fact, a multi-party democracy. So you don't give more powers for them to. The, the the commission right for making them even disband the political party which is not good because all the democracy as much look at england there are two uh, not a two-party system but there are two major political parties existing in the us there are two major political parties exist, existing but other smaller parties are encouraged if small party strong like a particular side the party in government can even give support right that did water force <laughs> <laughs> yes, and ladies and gentlemen, just a quick reminder while we guess the pink water. I mean, this is the ever brilliant Marcos Albangus um, Bangura, who is doing us an extreme favor by bringing to the life government now really bring come to us as we the people for consult we in which is supposed to be a participatory democracy for the people, by the people, and with the people. So we continue for Yeri from Marcos Bangura. And before they come on again, just a quick reminder. Um, on tomorrow, we get the rising star of Sierra Leone female politics. Femi Claudio School will be on this platform. Don't touch that dial. It's going to be very, very interesting. And I know say when I know this. On a Friday, we have the live lawyer, Ahmed Sisse, who is going to come to try and help us break down from a legal perspective, waiting Marcos to do for we Naya. Marcos now is CSO and doing us a brilliant job. On Saturday, the man who has been quite tight-lipped, um, um, Logos, Logos Koroma, will be on...
this platform with the Zoom. Super, super you know, briefly. Um, um, Marcus, are you back? Okay, I think we're having some internet, you know, yeah, I mean, some Wi Fi problems. Well, no problem. We can carry on with this. So, what will they talk about now? Fumble that just months to a major elections we will change the shape, the size, the direction of a country is almost upon us. And within this period of time, we are seeing many, many things that happen. And for understanding things then today, that's why we've brought in Mr. Marcos Bangura, who we hope say will help with for understand some of the things there. And the things that we will talk about, it's not speculative. I mean, there might be a speculation or two, which if one put a percentage on them, five, ten percent, but largely what the brother don't they talk about is accountability, it's a process, it's good practice. But you can chunk that all of that up, you can form an algorithm because it's based on fact, based on data, based on statistics. Marcos, I'll stop you in full flow. Maybe you want to pick up from there again. Yes, of course. Um, this whole issue about these fights, um, a lot of people they concentrate on proportional representation as well. But apart from the question of proportional representation, you know, the bill, the bills get very bad laws. Um, we need for actually scrutinize the bill. We need for see the bill. I remember we I did one they read history, right? He say forget a certain facts. We get a historian, we get a fact collector. And there's a difference between a historian and a fact collector. When you don't get the information, you need for see The historian receive the information. When you receive the information, you find out the way you use uh, uh, um, like we use a uh, filter something, right? If they find out the, the rough unwanted materials they stay up, the smooth one they go down, you understand? And one way could another the certain fact, right? So when you look at the constitution, right, you look at these bills, not it's not all so much about proportional representation as well. Because I find out say I don't see the no old debates and all a lot of things then, but the whole focus is proportional representation, right? We also get for look at certain flaws. You know, like the constitution itself, or uh, I mean, the, this act, and we need to get rid of these clauses. We these bad things, so we need to get rid of them. Otherwise, you know, law once it is passed, it's a law. Uh, it applies to everybody. We have to be very careful. They pass the public, the uh, um, the public order act, 1965. Uh, we see up to this, it's still haunting people. You understand? So as a result. If we pass them bills there, also we we'll look at them specific areas there and make sure say we get rid of them. For example, the question of registration, right? This question of registration, they come with an aspect on registration where they talk about one name, right? National identification number. Um, this national identification number now one of the qualifications where you forget before you are registered. Or are one of the criteria or the, what you can use them right now you look at how this and um, census being go and you look at the number of people that we be registered forget about the census in fact that need different from that one day are you at that particular time because i didn't do before the census itself come it was it was not well popularized a, a lot of people then no register you know for peace for democracy you know for harmony why can't we just do things where in a just equilibrium for everybody? All until they happen, they should say, we are not ready to progress. We just ready for retrogress. We want to take advantage of certain situation. And you don't say because this thing they help you for make you capture political power. You forget to say one day nobody has power because wait me learn in my studies about politics. Now the fact say the state is permanent, but no government is permanent. Sierra Leone, we all know from where they create the map of Sierra Leone, it is still Sierra Leone, right? Even at that, there are certain times where even in Sierra Leone, the geographical, which is a look like which be that which would be Sierra Leone, right? When you talk about governments, there is no government that is permanent. No government is permanent. So as a result of that, you make not today for suit you. 
Then once you make that law for suits you, that law will go hold on you. It's not a monarchy. Even the aspect of monarchy, now it's constitutional monarchy. When the prime minister said you get people and not get voices, before the people and not get voice, the, the, so the me, monarchy let me, decides. Let me, let, me, let me stop you right there, um, Marcos. Um, um, because um, even though we deal within the purview of a conversation, but um, um, we're straight into the speculative, the afterthought, and the conceived and preconceived notions. And I want to talk to you exactly about, about that. Um, according to you, like I say, I follow you, I follow you a lot. I want I want you to know this. And um, I learned from you a lot. So there is um, um we get to your electoral laws then. But at this particular point in time, it looks like say these laws are they almost want tamper with these laws. And I believe say now you the address. And if I can get you well, so a particular government is in place. And that government, they, they play around with the laws just for suit them. But eventually, every beginning has got an end. So no, ne, yeah. never mind, you know, yeah, whatever, they will have to go at some point and then left that law, they wouldn't be no manipulate. Are you saying this is just, first of all, is this true? What I just say. And um, is this just carelessness and selfishness on the part of... um? um Subsequent governments, them, I mean, they all do the same. It's about the now and not about the future. Yes, of course. Um, like there's one thing about governance, especially when you are governed by people that we they've transformed democracy to totalitarian states. Um, we have always suffered this. We have always suffered this. If you go back to 1961, from independence to this period, we don't see situation where I mean, laws have been manipulated, you know, for suit the convenience of certain people. But over time, since God government is permanent, it affects you. It will affect you. Say, for example, they make these laws, this question of proportional representation, and also the fact say they come with certain aspects the way they already include in the uh, public elections bill. They can't pass them into law by this government. Let's say the government lost this the 2023 elections. They go in opposition. Or let's say they even win this one. Then 2027, I start to be corrected, or 28, you understand? Then can loss another government can have power. It go manipulate the constitution as well. But even when you don't do it, it affects you. And I make I like the American system, the constitution. Of America, it has never been changed. Let me question they talk about changing the 1991. Now, one of the best ever we get. We just need small amendments in specific areas. Then they as only expect amendments. <laughs> we will not see the big amendments there, like Section One of the Constitution itself. We talk about uh, 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 fundamental principles of state policy. You know, we expect, say, for example, we are government. Uh, you know, we we'll take government at cost. For uh, uh, the cost of education, although there is free quality education, but also government fail for to perform. You can't take government to court. And I know they expect say for change. For me, change in times. The whole section, that particular uh, um, chapter one, you know, we don't see anything where we, a uh, uh, positive change. Even the C, the, the, the the constitutional amendment committee that was established, and also the white paper we come out. We don't see all that. So what we try to say here is the fact that. In making laws in the first place, there is what they call certainty. The law for be certain. The law for be publicized, you know, before ever it is made, right? And when it is made, if I if, if, if make them public, if I make people actually understand um, what the law is about, what the law, why you did pass the law in the first place. If you say you did do this, you did amend certain aspects of the Public Elections Act, why? In the first place, you the person waiting that the wrong way the person. You understand? We get for taking into consideration. But where we come and say we they do this, we they do that. At the end of the day, it will affect we. You know. So that is why it is but very prudent that we make sure say the law we make up not only for your own interest because once you are in position, you make up for your interest tomorrow. That law day will be in the interest of the enemy we make that law day for. Then you 
they become the, 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 the enemy now because the thing will affect you. Public order act is a classical example, you understand? Where people are not for protest, where they arrest people and do all kinds of things. You pass if you do something with government in you, they say public order act, question of uh, um, 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 orders from above, and all that. We don't see how people in the suffer. We need for stand as Ionians with one heart, one mind, and make sure say we do things that are fine, things that are good, not for which day, but generation, uh, generations yet unborn, you know, for posterity's sake. But I tell you, the Public Elections Act in the first place, I don't see no reason why they for pass public uh, for do amendment into that. The 2012 view is very good. Do slight amendment in it. But for making a, 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 an overhaul, you know, of the whole thing, it creates room for suspicion, it creates room for distrust, it, 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 it gets tendency for great chaos. For example, under the Public Elections Act, for example, now you find out, say, the, 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 registr uh, the, the registration officer gets so much powers. The registration officer could determine, you know, for register you or not for register you. Very, very, very bad. You understand? The president can determine the election. They can use in whims and caprices. Not only this president, but a president. A president, you understand? As far as the law exists, a president, whether or what insults, can manipulate that. You know? So you look at that so particular Marcos, aspect. Marcos, so Marcos, Marcos um, um, uh, with all due respect, this brings me to the next question because you've articulated it well. And it seems like a revolving door and a never ending process. Is there a way that we can end this as a people? You're not a member of the CSO, in fact, an executive director of a CSO. Can we organize ourselves and go to the Supreme Court and, you know, yes, seek a judicial review of all the things there that you're talking about so that we can have an effective and lasting change? Can we? Yes. Um when they look at governments, I can say government is like a car or a generator, a made up of various parts. And um, where one part get issue, it affects the whole system. We get you can now. You need fuel, you need plugs, you know, you need certain, you, need, you need oil. If you oil not the you get your fuel, you tank full, say full, you motor can only start. You start to get problem. Nothing will go happen. You understand? So as a result of that. The various institutions, that's say the three organs of government, we get they all get very important role for play. Now, make us say they talk about judicial review, we're very, very important, right? Judicial review is extremely, extremely important. So, as a result of its importance, you also get parliament with so much powers, right? Parliament they check under checks and balances, we get separation of powers. Because I said the three organs of government can be divided, you understand, or separated in person, in, in, in functions, and in control. Then also we get checks and balances. We say one organ to check the activities of the other organ of government, you understand. And all of that checks and balances day, we expect say we say the executive don't go ultra vice the constitution, that the responsibility of the judiciary, the Supreme Court, for question and for even make say, for tell the president say. Or for parliament for tell the president say in action is null and void. You understand? Or the judiciary for tell the president say it's null and void. So in that situation, we go able for doing what we do. But now look, let's say for example, you get a speaker. The appointment of a speaker is strongly influenced by the president. The appointment of judges is strongly influenced by the president. You so we know, we, know, so we, know, we know all of this. Uh, what's the solution? We know all of this, what you're saying. The solution, the solution in the first place. As Sahel unions, right, we for endeavor for make sure say we imbibe the spirit of political tolerance. That's the first thing. Imbibe the spirit of political tolerance. Once that is done, we respect one another. You understand? And we respect the principles, the constitution. One that we can call, for example, we can call a national a national uh, convention or a conference you bring well, Marcos, something Marcos, 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 yes. it's the same constitution that bestows a lot of power on the president of the republic how do we yes. douse down this power that is possessed by the president yes. because like you the president said, the three arms of the government president. are meant to be co-equal yes. branches but they are not power mm -hmm. is vested 
within the executive and from there that yes. the whole team all side they come out how do we do the whole problem that? is the whole problem is we don't get respect for the law there are limitations to the powers of the president the president public opinion not limitation to the powers of the president which is a public opinion now the aggregates of views held by the public on a particular issue plus a proportional representation it's not a good system it lack accountability it's a weak in a government it's expensive it's complex you know let's say this system will create more problems then if public opinion expresses the media civil society the ordinary man of streets we express that with the influence government policy right that is one way i limit the powers of the of the president the constitution itself you can forget if you for be a respecter of the constitution international treaties you know these are all for example we talk about sovereignty what's that sovereignty that the supreme powers of the state but no country is, is, is sovereign right it's, it's you know because nobody is an island no one stands alone no country is, 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 is we get with raw materials we can get diamonds gold we can get bauxite we can get plantations but even when we get them if we not collaborate with america for example or the uk we get the machinery they don't get somebody get the machinery and then for use the machinery for making them get which we need there is collaboration all that the limits the powers of the president you get certain sections that are the constitution where they limit the powers of the president but who side presidents abuse in power what do we expect of the judiciary the judiciary for step in and declare the action of the president null and void parliament for step in so all these things the same constitution gave the president powers and the same constitution limits the powers of the president and everything is in the hands of the public we absolutely the electorate. <laughs> I want for bought in quick. I want for bought in quickly because um, um okay. you, what, what you've done, brother, is like you find a way for something where so difficult and complex for make it appear really simple. In other words, the people yes. need to understand their obligation inside the democracy, and Absolutely. I really I understand this fully well. And I may force them. Let me be you know yeah, straightforward with you that are uh, they understand this despite all my questions to dozens and dozens of people that I don't talk to, you make them sound so simple and more realistic. In other words, the people they need to understand their place in the democracy. Now, the, the democracy. power derives from the people, and without the people, the president cannot be. The yes. judiciary cannot be. It is in the but Constitution. Going, yes, sir. But going forward, going forward, Marcos, is this not the argument that we are having in terms of election laws, the PR system, how we elect our public officials, you know, your parliamentarians, those will go on for go represent the people. Then. If we can pick the right forum, the right platform, the right system for choose, we, I mean, for elect a public official, then probably we might solve, even if not 100%, maybe 50 or 75% of this problem. That reminds me with emphasis, say, the situation will be worse with um, proportional representation. It will be worse. You understand? Because we actually need to get members in the parliament. In the first place, let's look at how members of parliament are elected. And once they are there in parliament, what comes next? Now, for make them able to protect, you know, the states and the people there. Right. For example, make us say um, the constitution give power to the president, say that this is for do, that that is for do, that's also thing. The same constitution, right, say the president that the guardian of the constitution is the commander in chief of the army. By that position, they get power for declare war. You know? They get power for go on aggression with another country as commander in chief of the army. Now you look at the president having the constitution, in as much as he give the president so much power, he also say the president that the guardian of the constitution. So the president gets obligation for ensure say he protects the constitution. So it takes it takes a man 
You know, it takes a Democrat. It takes, in the case of Nelson Mandela, for example, if I don't go for his second term, but you see, it was not relevant going for his second term. But he tried to put things them in place. He strategized things and put them in place. People are crying down, but it's good. Today, South Africa is saved. So even when we look at the Public Elections Act, we look at certain clauses in the Public Elections Act. We look at the question of NIN in the Public Elections Act. We look at the power vested in the president, right, for suspend or for remove the chief electoral commissioner. There are strings to it, right? But also, there are also strings to that of the Auditor General. There are strings attached to it also. But yet we so what happened and now section 137 of the constitution has been linked to the chief electoral commissioner and there has not been a definition of gross misconduct it's a gross misconduct right who's the stick or barometer will they use for measure the gross misconduct for which the president can decide say this person has for for mover for, for, for actually suspender because if it can be suspended Suspend them, appoint another Okay, I think say we uh, I think say we lost Marcos de briefly. Okay, I think say we lost Marcos de briefly and Fambule Mufna de Yerimi, me are the host and presenter of this particular program here tonight. Depending on where you are, but I'm sure. Most countries will have gone into um, um, the evening hours. I mean, uh, Prince Emil Koma, and we get Marcos Bangura, very brilliant fellow, very articulate fellow. And what do they try for do? Now participate in a civic obligation from the direction where we country they go. We can disagree, but we can agree as citizens. We all don't have to think the same. We can look at things, you know, here in the same direction. Things the way we believe in, things the way we think say surely go be in the goodness of a country, just like what the brother they say. But at the same time, we will get people that we kind of disagree. And we are not saying no to this because it's not the same democracy we will talk about. But whilst you disagree, we go equally ask, why are you disagreeing? Why are you disagreeing from something, some other thesis with somebody else they propose? Anyway. I'm not sure whether we will get them back because I mean they come to the wrap up of the program and just ask few jotting questions them quickly. So whilst we they hope say it will come back for wrap up such a brilliant program, just in case it not turn up again. But here it is, Fambulem. So we don't see we get parliamentary deliberation them within um, um, the past week, highlighted within the last 96, 72 hours. Ongoing parliamentary discussion. And by the way, let me not forget, just a quick reminder. Um, um, on tomorrow, Femi Claudius Cole, the rising star of Sierra Leonean politics, specifically in the female category. And I'm not discriminating before some people they want to hold me responsible. She's not, you know, here for something one not mean. She's absolutely a female. And in a patriarchal society, when a matriarch is doing well, that has to be highlighted. Prior to Femi Claudio School, we've had others, but for now, now in the trend, the scene. And we are happy, excited, absolutely humble for hosting on this platform here tomorrow. Please not forget for tuning. And as a matter of fact, don't touch that dial. Don't. On Saturday, Mr. Logus Koroma, the former minister under Anes Koroma in government, we get so much for talk about. So much things have been said about him. In fact, the kitchen sink has been thrown at him. Will be hosted on this very platform, the TNN TV Media Empire, by the astounding Super Mohammed Kamara. He will be on the platform on Saturday. On Sunday, we get one or two programs where they come up. We go talk about redenomination, what you need for know, what you don't know. And what we know that's redenomination with currency that has been redenominated. We go have a piece on that right on this platform. So keep your, your eyes and ears open. Ahmed Sisse will be on the program for can't explain to we waiting and they talk about now parliament waiting the law say who are they at fault, who are they at fault. 
an exciting period is about to unfold on us. And it's coming from none other but a TNN media empire. The empire of truth. The empire of objective fact. The no propaganda zone. Zero zilt propaganda. Anyway, back to the topic that matters for tonight. We have been talking to um, Marcos Bangura. He is the executive director for the consortium. Let me just get that. Let me make sure say, I get that correctly. There is so much note that I have to. I think he's back. And I'm happy that he's back. He's done so well tonight that he need for roundup in your program. But he, now the CSO for the Citizens Forum for Democracy and Empowerment, that now the C4D. Um, um, Marcos, um, I am quite pleased for have you back. And I'm sure the audience will be... Citizens Forum. Yeah. For I'm democratic accountability. The audience will be quite pleased for have you back because it's been such a brilliant, brilliant show. And for let you not wrap up this show, will have been a stain on the platform. So I'm quite kind of excited for have you back. You may say something, but I'm not going to take you on that again because we need for move on because we are coming towards the end of the show. And just before we come towards that end again, I want to say thank you that despite the constraints, because some of we guess the way we can get either the lights don't go, the background is dark, the Wi-Fi yeah. is no good, and so many things that we can understand, yet you have withstood those challenges. And for this, I want to commend you. And may God richly bless you, brother, because you're on the right side and you're on the right path in terms of your country. And one of the things that way you're concerned about is about posterity. And you mentioned a pandemic show, and people will never forget that because it's etched deep into the memory of people. Um, Marcos, um, politically speaking, there's a lot ongoing in Parliament. I asked you this earlier on. What do you think will be the eventual outcome um, for this debate that we didn't get when are these public elections bills from 2022, whether or the Constitutional Amendment Act on 20 about 2022, and also the NIC where you mentioned this registration process? It seems that there's a lot of complications ahead because the time frame where we get between now and election, definitely you can see some malfunctions, some malapropisms, some anomalies, you know, you're already on the way it's set. Do you reflect my views? Yeah, of course, of course. It gets a lot of um, anomalies going on because in the first place, uh, I want to address the issue of violence when anomaly that the parliament, yes. because I don't go imagine, yes. um, which happened the other day. Um, on Tuesday, we will lead to um, um, a postponement of the, 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 the thing itself. Last Tuesday, before this one, we chaos within the parliament. And even yesterday, I understand, say, they arrested three people away. They get some injurious um, objects them. We actually not good. You know, you can't get that kind of people in there. And we also see video of um, one of the most um, active, vibrant female politicians being blocked. We, if they try to do entrance, even myself, I see um, an online application we I do. They don't reply to me. I apply. So that I'll get a pass for go the parliament and um, actually watch. And there was no reply to me. People are making things so complex for a small country where we all forget one mind and we will for focus for make sure say we take this country to a higher height. Now you look at the bill, the intention of the framers of the bill. You know, not all that mean well. Because when you bring certain complicated things inside, in the first place, what do they expect? say we forget complex very complex things with inside inside those bills you know this issue of mean business for peace for security and other things put it aside and forget about it you look at the power way and um, the, the 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 registration officer gets you also look at the power way the in the police station very very, very important back the station in the police station the officer in charge of a police station gets the power you know, for void or cancel a whole election in a, in a, in a police station. And they cancel the election if in, if, if in your opinion, if you say there was a serious violence at that particular place there. 
the, 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 the acts or the bill get power for nullify that particular voting day. And once you nullify that, it will give rise to chaos, to confusion. You see? And if the chief electoral commissioner feels say that particular area they will not void, not go affect the entire election results. Which that or that district block system, which that will go ahead and call up. That reminds me of constituency 110. We all know the crisis will be lead to the former chief electoral commissioner for void, you know, that particular election of constituency 110 when it comes to the election, just because there was violence in a particular police station. Well, in fact, we get we get footages of the one that will be involved. To date, the police did not do any arrest on that. So if that happened in that particular period, what as I said, most of the things that we've been happy before, then they will be somehow successful. But some of the things that they are seeing, then they put into these bills. Constituency 110, where the chief electoral commissioner can't the election because of violence. Today, we don't see that aspect they being included in the public elections act, the proposed public elections act. We don't see how they use certain sections, other section and uh, subsections, other section 137 for suspend the, the, the auditor general. And these areas have also been included. You see, because if you give power to the police station officer for council election because of violence, what is that the yardstick or the barometer would be used for measure the, 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 the magnitude of that particular violence? If, say, for example, you get now, yes, sir. Can we think of very subject matter in that particular story? Mm -hmm. You know, in a story we I cover, I cover a lot, and I was really stunned there. And it's like, how do we get from there and get to who started with the thing happen? And the issue they talk, I mean, just want to ask you quickly from you the pathway you really go is. Um, how is that story uh, on at all? People are not kind of, I mean, at the point where they talk about democracy, we see that the people, of people, strong people, way now the democratic process, we talk about a polling station, massacred, massacred by so people who actively recognize and care. And not be being care and today they will tell people something else. How is that process? It's been like two years on, and we need to move on. But this was a process, and that was the unveiling of violence, not for the first time, but on a different level. In other words, people like a vote, and we can nullify the vote. So it don't become a culture now that every time now we they see this. How is that story faring so far in everything else where they happen? Well, um, for the mere fact that they include them on the Public Elections Act, say where there is violence, the, the police station officer is empowered for counsel that particular which is like, that It means, say, we are legalizing violence at police stations. Right? In your opinion, right? Somebody can get your opinion, right? It's like, we legalize them. Because I tell you, make us say, um, today, is the APC versus the SNPP. Tomorrow, probably, it will be the APC versus the... Uh, today, is the SNPP versus the APC. Perhaps it will be the APC return match. Understand? Now, we look at the situation, yeah. like, like what happened at Constituency 110. Today, we don't see something like that being incorporated into a law, or it's about to be... To be it's not in the bill that the special manager can get the power. Now, it's not only the chief electoral commissioner who, now it has been brought down to the station manager. And we know we one thing we get for make that thing very clear, clear, right? People are gonna say we this and that's so thing. We need for know those pulling station officers, and it should be mixed. We're not gonna allow a particular tribe or a particular region for become pulling station officers. If I say, for example, you are APC dinner power, and then pulling station officers then they right to so tell APC members. You understand? And then go at those and uh, police stations there. Then the find out this area now SFP is stronghold. So then decides, okay, because SFP is the stronghold, we now we are APC, now we need a power. You understand? So what should they do? Then particular people are so we will go now just go 
comes to the elections then. When I say that violence, when I, can you be send on our own people then, like in particular stronghold, when are the opposition stronghold, you can send young people that go cause violence day, especially when the police deal with you. For example, what are people create violence and that area is stronghold. So then a sideway now one thousand votes to 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 fifty votes or one hundred votes. Then they say this violence be there, so then cancel them. And when they cancel them, they say the chief electoral commissioner say you know they affect the results, the general uh, uh, election results. So as a result, they left them out, and wow. that's going to kill them. Out. Exactly, Marcos. Just for the, the benefit of um, benefit of time. Um, on this same line of questioning, some time ago there was another by election with a behold, in which um a election official, you know, was caught altering the number, the figure. Yes. From it was it was in believe, yeah, yeah, it was in a reminder. Yes. Yeah, in yes. other words, you know, yeah, since you re you remember that, my question to you, Marcos, has anything been done about something we've been so we be so obvious within a democratic election process so as to serve as a deterrence? Where are we with that case there? Because it'd be obvious and the catch and koro koro one that I mean mm -hmm. there was no denial. What is being done? Mm -hmm. has anything been done? Where are we? Um we are told that there was an investigation and to date we have not been properly informed about it. And as far as the time is not the, it means we are legalizing it. Absolutely. Because once, yeah, you don't fall short, once you don't fall short of a particular offense, deal with the person. All right, people of talk say neck itself is conniving because the investigation was done by neck. Right? Now the, 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 the uh, uh, national, uh, 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 what I would say? Now, let, let me just say neck, you understand? People are going to take and say this particular neck institution is conniving, perhaps with government or perhaps with opposition against Sharia Leoneans. Because if we say that um, this individual, right, um, don't commit a very hideous offense, you know, electoral malpractice, a very serious offense, yeah. then there is an investigation. And nothing has come out of it. There is, there is the problem. It just started like way 2018, when there was a crisis at my 91. We went there, we covered that thing. And there was an investigation. Whether the police were punished, where you might already tell you, say the right to life, you can't take the life of another person. Somebody was killed there. I've seen. You know, series of these mean? things. Investigations <laughs> and nothing has come out of it. Young boy, young boy, young boy, young boy, so yes, 29 years so, old. Young man. Yes, what did he kill? This platform being raised, just as a matter of fact, for Inform Fambule, we've been involved in these actions for quite a long time. And the period we mark us, they talk about this platform actually raised, I don't know how many million euros will be raised, which was presented personally by um, um, one of the co anchor them the, uh, uh, on this platform, Mohamed Kamara. We're going to the village, now 91. We still get a video day. And hopefully, one of these days, we go play them. But we were there. We went to sympathize and empathize with that family. We see the daddy. And then call Lily, Lily Cotbury during that presentation ceremony. Sorry about that, Marcus. In fact, that's, 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 that's thing very, very important. Like, yeah. we consortium being even good day, immediately because we get... A distress call at night. We left in the morning, right? We go to the place. When we reach there, in fact, an emotica will be used. A minute we reach in a black jeep. The, the, the people in the village, they're wrong. They were scared. We call them. We say, no, we get this information one for the investigation. We go further for call the press conference. We bring the boy with a kill in daddy. We also bring a wife. You know, we bring them and do like, like, a large office will be all that particular, which is everything. But nothing has come out of it. A lot of things, you know. And this all the other well for democracy, you know, for good governance, for peace, for trans uh, and tranquility, you know, you know the other well. That is why let we try for make sure say we go, we take the laws, we go by the laws. And when we amend constitution or they amend a or they try for do a bill, that bill is cannot only be used as a weapon against a particular set of people because of the fact that 
it can equally in a just equilibrium be used against you one day. So as a result of that, let we think things positive. Anything, not take out to the people. Participating in democracy is very, very important. And it's an aspect of democracy. So that aspect will be explained. We are in the station manager in the police station is empowered, you know, for look at a part after when they don't vote, he say because of violence, a nullifier. Then the chief electoral commissioner say this particular thing, it didn't affect the whole result. We call it you don't disenfranchise the people. You don't yeah. disenfranchise the people. Yeah. That, that brings me to even proportional representation, where choice is limited. Under proportional representation, choice is limited. It doesn't give opportunity to the people there for choose who really they want. Because that, that a list of 10, 20, 30 people they bring before you, they say, we're not going to vote. You understand? Go this street, for example. You get a list. We're not going to vote. You don't even know them. You just have to vote. You don't know why you vote or who they vote for. You don't, you don't know. You understand? And the situation, the proportional situation is so complex, even to the most educated. And they talk about that man, where they like Kamete in Kamakwe. You understand? Or that man, where they like Boidu. You understand? Or that post in the way they like Mungere. It's very difficult. You're not going to understand. It's like, just put a list, I'll go vote no more. And in a democracy, you should know who you vote for and why you vote. You forget a choice. So there is limited choice in proportional representation. We're not actually good. In addition to the question of um, uh, uh, lack of accountability, to the question of um, coalitions being formed, to the question of weakening, you know, the party, and the fact say the party not able to actually um, 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 implement in campaign promises because of um, coalitions. And there's much more party that will come that they get the balance of power. You know, and they get the balance of power. So as a result, and then they regulate you as an in the, uh, as a political party. So that is why Citizens Forum for Democratic Accountability, we stand tall and support first past the post. We are there is no first past the post. We can say, okay, make we manage proportional representation because there are two systems already they use. But two thirds of the world countries, they use first past the post than proportional representation. So that I make with the call on Sierra unions for make them understand the government, the president, let them see reasons, say this thing is your proportional representation for don't bring camp prior to this thing. So that people are able to look at look at them and decide for no one. First pass the post, it is simple, it is cheap, it is familiar to the people, and not complex, you know. Then it will give rise for accountability. No, you know, it will make you know who that you will vote for. So all these things put together. Proportion and uh, first past the post is a better option to proportional representation. When they look forward for see what will happen, but then they look at public opinion. You know, look at public opinion. We they serve as a pressure group. We are not mounting pressure, but they try to influence the opinion of individuals and society. But then they look at what is best for the nation, for posterity, not for chaos. Because going with this system. And all NTSO will they not add into this public elections bill. You know, this aspect of political party, wherein you give the political party registration commission, that you call a regulatory commission, right? Political party regulatory commission. Now, the political, the, the commission now, they regulate the activities of political parties. Maybe they regulate about, you know, once it become um, 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 an authority, sort of, it get more powers, you know? And that way, look at them. Um, in a little chaos, you can't ostracize political parties. No, you can't do that. Because in a democracy, we talk about participating in democracy. We are in individuals should be given the opportunity for participate. You look at the quota of women, about 30%. Now, I agree, uh, some people in the argue say, it enable women for contest and, force and proportional representation. That is a plantant miscarriage of justice. There is no iota of truth there. Um, um, uh, a, a fallacious presentation of material because at the end of the day, the the the, the hierarchy of the party that they choose are you woman the candy if the hierarchy not choose you. So it is it, it, it just go back if during this particular period on the first pass the post they get challenges for appoint woman them you know for make them give it, for give woman a symbol for contest. So tell me on a proportional representation where they will look at women and say they bring their camp inside. So I wonder. That argument 
Usai actually it come from. Say on a proposal representation, it get too many representation. That is not but the case. Yes, sir. I want you to analyze and comment just quickly because we come very quickly to us there. I don't get you clear. I don't get you clear. Okay, you there? Okay, you do. I don't get you now. Yes, yeah. So they say let you analyze this video. You talk about some um, earlier on about five minutes ago. Okay, okay. But I want to let you yeah. analyze that very quickly. Um, this video they show. Oh, that player, that player, that player, no, for the benefit of the audience. Right, okay. Maybe not to everybody. Okay. Okay. Mami, go pass. Now I'm going to go inside. Mami, pass. Now I'm going to go inside. Now we there. Mami, go pass. Only Mami, it's not a stop. The pack you want to car. They said Mami not for going inside because because I'm not a stand say they they first for the people of this country. Which guy which a la titu is? This is a democracy. Yeah, now the democracy is the people they talk about. The mother. The mother of democracy. Yes. Yeah. 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 Don't my model of course, Femi Clodo School come now the seat and now Ewango Parliament for go witness this today. But they're not even there for make them go inside. The police then stop them, the blow come, they say, you know, they say, you know, they say, so anyway, Marcos, we understand the video. You've seen it. A lot of people have seen it. And we don't play them briefly. And you touched on them earlier on. And um, Femi Claudia School herself, you know, you use an extreme language. But it seems befitting the murder, the murder of democracy. They ask her, you know, yeah, for, con for, for confirm. She confirmed both the dress code and the pass. Yet she was rejected entry. Your thoughts, please. Um, quite recently, I do a press release. We are in a call for the resignation of the Inspector General of Police. I not do them out of malice. I do so because I find out, say, in the past two years, because where he took over as Inspector General of Police, there have been a lot and lot of human rights abuses. Not saying that he committed as an individual, but under his watch and under his command, and this go in, uh, in, in, in tandem with waiting with just the CISO. They are then get they pull out a notice, a form for many people then apply. Um Femi Claudia School, Madam Femi Claudia School, decide for full. That is what is expected of a good citizen. A good citizen in the first place must be law abiding. So as a result of that. He decide for apply. Even myself, I apply. I apply immediately as I apply. But I check my email, no respond. They don't respond to me. Where for don't print them, I go. Nothing like that. Femi Clodo School, I follow that. He go to the, 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 the barricade in the first place. It's so, it's so, it's so, it's so shocking for see barrage of military and police officers at the parliament building. Crisscross, you know, barricades. We are in the stopper in the first place. Why selective justice? Why you for stopper? You're not supposed for stopper. The police, for ensure safety, they perform in functions according to the police act and according to what the constitution say. Policeman not for take sides. That that I make the country is still caught in a web of retrogression. The country is not progressing, and democracy is being is being is is, is being um, um, crippled. You know, democracy is under siege. For you know, you can't stop somebody <laughs> where to go for a parliamentary sitting. You know, go for go get information. You want for no, and it's a very vibrant and active, vivacious, you know, woman politician. We don't have footprints in the sand of history. Where they make mark in the sand of history. Why you stop that particular individual? Okay. You get it pass? What is required? Okay. In fact, okay. all this they remind me of the apartheid system in South Africa. If we don't begin to use pass to go to parliament, you get for use pass for going to parliament. And when you go in, they ostracize you. What is the difference between this and the apartheid system where we don't happen in South Africa? It is a modern, you know, apartheid system. Now in the app is so gradually. 
Okay. As a result of that, it's okay. bad. Yeah. Okay, Marcos, just before you run the show, we get a tradition where we can recognize people and we watch or give views them. But then views them this one they can help we for understand what you they do, how we they do, what you they do, and etc. And I actively encourage fan I mean, you cannot have three thousand viewers and then you get hundred people or fifty people who acknowledge the program. Whether you disagree with me, thumbs down, or you agree with me, thumbs up, please make a known. That's what we're saying. Nothing say you they hide, they watch the program from the background because you feel afraid, say somebody go vilify you because you're watching the TNN media empire. I mean, there is some way where we go know how many women they watch, which in the age group, which country they watch from. There's stats then day then day. I mean, the platform they will they use, they can analyze down there for we know to we self they do that. So please, please recognize the platform, not in a good way per se. I mean, if they do something bad and you don't agree, feel free for be critical. Like I say, you can't get 5,000 viewers and then you get 50 people that we acknowledge. That is not right. In the At the end of the day, we are all Sigalonians. Um, basically, we get Alarini a a a Shaw is watching. I hope I pronounced the first name and I'm right, please. No offense. Dauda Franklin Cargo is watching. No sound. Dauda Franklin Cargo, the sound is active now. That was from the very beginning. Yes, I got Yeah, that was from the very beginning. Megan Rogers Wright. Megan Rogers Wright. Megan Rogers Wright is watching. Um, Pecos Wunde, Penny Shaw, and 17 other people are watching. Okay, Marcos is back. Let's just get him back so he can hear these comments. People, Jay Martin is watching. Joseph Koroma is watching. Samuel Max Gigba is watching. Unisa Omans is watching. Fodi Mustafa Ture is watching. Victor Fodi is watching. Mohamed Koroma is watching. Mas say my. Masa say my. The problem with the PR system, the people have lost faith into the bio government. You cannot trust President Bill with the PR system. He will misuse it. That will likely take us to war. That's extreme, but that's his view. Um, John Conte is watching. Gladys Cromer, that's my wife, my beloved wife. She's watching. Edward Amara, can you also tell us if any strength of the system? And then Marcos, that's from um, 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 a regular contributor to the program of a very critical mind. So you when they talk about the system earlier on, which you criticize you know, the PR system. So what is asking if there's any strength to the system? So it's not all just negative. So any negative to that particular system? Apparently you've not been listening because I did. So you talk about the negative. He's asking for the, the good side of, of the system. No, no, the, the good side negative. of the system, he asks for. Uh, yeah, um, oh, if any the, the system. Side, no, no, the good, the good side, that's what you mean by any strength to that particular system. So any good to that particular system because you oppose to the system. So you lay waste, yes. you know, you're waiting, you're um, to the yes. negative um, system. So any goodness of the system. It gets, it, gets, it gets good aspect as well as negative aspect. But what is important is the fact that the negative aspects, they outweigh the good aspect of a um, proportional representation because of um, several reasons. Because, because one one advantage we it could give is enable smaller political parties to make legal representation in the parliament. You know, there is possibility to say they will get representation in the parliament, which to some extent is good. But by itself, again, most times they can form coalition where water down that particular aspect day. Because one of the major aspects that of a um, proportional yeah, Mark, representation. Because of time, yeah, yeah. Some of the issues that you cite, which is of course a disadvantage yeah. the electorate them because actually people it's way, uh, yeah, it disadvantages them and um, there's a slew of so much, so much. Um, why. Yeah, yes. um, um, yeah, Mr. Amara. The man may not address that, but this is just some of it. You can go back and watch that. If I find them, I go cut that particular script out in about four or five minutes and post that out for the general public tomorrow. Hopefully, I find time. Temu Bangura is watching. Mega Reggae Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Marcos Bangura. This PR system is now a daily talk just for the members of parliament and not hearing any 
benefit for us, the ordinary citizens. Please say something. Thank you very much. Um, Usman Bari is watching. Isaka Bangura is watching. Alarini again. This guy is good. God bless you for educating us. Wow. That's a good compliment. And that's for you, Mr. Bangura. Jocelyn Williams that's is that's watching. That's that's like McFoy is watching. Alarini Shaw is watching. And Alarini Shaw says again, all institutions for being independent. PR no good. That's um, Alarini's um, 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 position. Abdul Kanu is watching. Ibrahim Kande is watching. George Orwell is watching. Twila Macaulay is watching. Kamara Kesuma is watching. Ibrahim Kamara is watching. Lam Zudi is watching. Edward Amara again. Can the guest kindly tell us if at all there is a strength of the district block or PR system? Yeah, I think he's addressed that. Even this now, Mr. Amara. And um, one of the things is, is this advantage is the electorate. And like I say again, I will try for see whether I'm able to cut a piece in which he talks about um, the strength of him. Um, not only the disadvantages, he does oppose to that particular system. And he gives the reasons why. I hope you were listening. If you were not, I will try for highlight him, um, hopefully tomorrow or the days to come. Mohamed Fudi Kabia is watching. Um, uh, Mohamed Toure is watching. Moses Tumbuya is watching. Ran Moses, how are you doing? Long time, brother. I hope the family is well. Ransford Clements is watching. Edward Amara again. Mr. Bangura, too much of blame games seems you are more of a politician instead of a CSO working and, take, and talking for our people. I'm sure you take umbrage to that and you go, let me address that quickly, will you? Yes, yes. Uh, let, let, me just address, let me just address that. Sure, you know, fine, um, people don't actually they understand um, the role of a civil society. And the yes. science maker says, I'm a political scientist. I'm a political scientist, if not a scholar of political science. So as a result of that, talking about a system, in a system, in a polity, don't make you a politician. You understand? Because it is, it is sometimes it's disgraceful, as a matter of fact. Looking at okay. me, I discuss politics. And I know say, and they look at good governance. The opposite okay, of good governance is bad governance. So if you okay. are, yes, sir. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that, that's okay. I wish you had more time. Because I give, I give you time to wrap up the yes. program right on the two-hour mark. Yes. But I'll just, I'll just, okay, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. You want to add something quickly? 30 seconds, one minute. Yeah, go on, please. It's your program. Okay, I just want to try for talk, say, me organization, Citizens Forum for Democratic Accountability, we they look at the issues of good governance and the opposite of good governance is bad governance and the person need for know that and what they do so now citizenship and democracy education and um, i have to look at the two i weigh the two and where i don't weigh the two i look at and say proportional representation is not suitable for Sierra Leone. i don't get instances and besides i have written a book a1 government for senior secondary school using schools and colleges and um, I deal with proportional representation, the electoral system. How, how we can get hold of that book? How can we get hold of that book? It, it's available at St. Joseph's Convent um, Secondary School. If you want it, you can get it from me, there. Must send, me, must send me a link later. How can we get the book so we we'll advertise them and let people enjoy Okay, that's good. The book, that. Yes. So I have been a teacher and I taught for over a decade teaching those areas. And the moment they ask you, uh, 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 they uh, ask you is an academic and an educator as well. I know um, he's got a very critical mind. Fine. No so being, being so an academic and educator, of. if we're able to know the difference that Mr. Marcos here, Marcos Bangua here, is not a politician, he's not talking politics, but he is demystifying, you know, um, the concept of first past the post and proportional representation. Okay. And at Marcus, the end of the day, Marcus, you have to, you have to get a stand. And my stand Marcus, is, to, first pass the post is better than proportional. Yeah, you will have to leave it there. Um, um, you're really mad like mad man. That's Ibrahim Kamara. I don't know who he was referring to. Abdullah Kamara is watching. Al Mami Toure is watching. Cherno S. Barry, Mr. Marcos, they cannot inform you about the PR system because they know that you are going to talk the truth about it. Um, Abdullah Kamara, I love this platform watching from... Um, um, don't cask. I believe that's in France. I hope I pronounce them well. My French is not good. Forgive me, high school French, uh, Mr. Kamara. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. 
Um, David Kamara is watching. Sundia 2, Freeman is watching. Adama Johnson is watching. Famoro Koroma is watching. Eddie Jalo is watching. Banks Umar is watching. Kumba S. Emma Bori is watching. I hear and see a lot of new names, and I really appreciate this. Mamadou Wuriba is watching. Ahmed A. Jalo is watching. Um, um, Edward Amara again. Do you think telling me that I am a madman? Okay, be the respond. Oh, now I know who that other guy be the respond to. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> or you are just one of the guys from um, um, from Fiti Fiti Corner. <laughs> Um, good, good address, <laughs> MM, Mr. Amara. <laughs> For the Mustafa Touré, Andrew Laval, and Ibrahim Tommy mentioned the difference in the number of um, seats and the vote percentage in constituency system. You can defeat someone by a single vote all around the country and win all the seats. In other words, someone can win 49% of the votes and ended up having no seats. The Conservatives won but about a 7% margin, but ended up with an absolute majority. So that's the difference between the PR system and the first past the post system, the advantages and disadvantages. Must see me try for highlight. Mohamed Kamara, brilliant discussion always on Then and Now Media Empire. Thank you so much, Mr. Mohamed Kamara. Um, Alma Misise is watching. Masi say my fix the structures, not the electoral system, PR system. It's a bad law. You are not trusted. Sure. Your government. You can't trust the new government to repeat. Okay? Sahid K is watching. Ali Fona is watching. Dumitru Kojoka is watching. And of course, when I read the name, so we get fan base them all the way inside Eastern Europe, Romania, um, 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 Russia. These are no for sure. And Poland, we do have people who watch us there. And if you we can flow in English and then um, Creo. Tommy Satya is watching. Alarini Shaw, thanks, Marcos. Alfred James Mosiri is watching. Mayeni M. Parsons is watching. Prezo Song Jeman is watching. Um, um, Prezo Song Jeman, greetings from Bristol. Hey, Bristol near me. Hello, how are you? Catherine Conte is watching. Yeli Samura is watching. Bobo Leon B is watching. Usman Masari is watching. Momo S. Bakui. Is watching. Abdul Kaibo is watching. Gabriel El Conte is watching. Alarini Shaw, you are doing a good job. Alarini Shaw, you said you said it correctly. Um, Momo S. Bakui, the PR system is not good for our country. Mariatu Anderson is watching. Abdul Conte is watching. Moses A. Kamara is watching. Bobby Brown, Marcos, continue the good work. SLPP pay most of them for distraction. <laughs> Jibril Bangura is. Um, um, Jibril Kamara Sina is watching. Mansare Sie is watching. Mm -hmm. Leslie Jarrett is watching. Junior Kango is watching. Bobo Leon B. Mr. Kroman, what does the opposition parties do to stop the BO government from passing the bill on proportional representation? Marcos, keep this in your mind as you wrap up the program. Probably you've got an advice for Mr. Bobo Leon Ben. And I repeat his question. His MM. His um, 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 contribution, which is, what does the opposition parties do to stop the BO government from passing the bill on proportional representation? Mariatu Anderson, thanks, guys. Sahiki, your guest is highly versatile. It's highly vast. Honestly, want to thank him for his honest and succinct submission of the PR system. This current regime is not acting in good faith. Why not wait after elections, after elections, and bring whatever you dream to deem fit to the people for substantive deliberations? Kanu Horatio George is watching. The final contribution here is from Kai Fofana. Prince, you are always on point. Thanks very much to bring the light that we fail to see in our democracy. May God bless Mama Salon. Usma Yansana, you guys. But thank you very much, Mr. Kai Fofana, for your kind sentiment. Like um, um, Mr. Bangura said earlier on, would they do this for posterity? Posterity is going to judge every one of us. You can be selfish today, and the gains where you want is just so personal and just selfish that you get a now, and you forget, say, even though you're away from home, like I are day away from home, 
I'm okay here where I am. I get all my basics, but why should I forget home? I get the larger bulk of my family, my extended members of the family are there. Me grand picking them, me picking them, me sister them picking them, cousin me picking them. And by extension, the larger African setting of family as we understand them. Why should I turn my back away from home? Simply because I get something artificial where I am. Home is always in my mind and we will never go away. As I speak today, I wish I were home. But fortunately, circumstances get me by action of faith where I am. But home is home. And posterity, like Mr. Bangura said, is what really matters. Because long after we've gone, we will be judged, just like how we make judgment today. Mr. Bangura, the final word. Yes, um, somebody give example where he, he, he take instance to first the way he talks, say, first pass the post, uh, um, get issue because of the fact that you will get 49, the person get 51, say to speak. Then, the person with the 49 did get six. We get we own political system, right? Now, look, make we go to uh, the electoral college now the US. The electoral college at the US. <laughs> we are in, you get you get the, 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 the people, right? The public vote, if you like, right? Where they vote almost for one person. By the end of the day, electoral college gets few people left, right? So I think you know, it's up to 700 or something like that. But they make the decision. So when you go talk about that, when you go talk about the, the, the prime minister in England, you understand? We, the, even a contest as a prime minister, where they represent a particular um, constituencies, for example, where they represent, but because you are the leader of the majority party in the parliament, <laughs> they take you say that like you win, you understand? But these things have survived. Um, 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 first past the post system, you know, now one of the oldest system, and two thirds of the world population or world country still using it. So as a result of that, it is because it is good. Other than the, 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 the um, first uh, a proportional representation, right? And waiting the opposition for do for make sure say they stop this bill from being passed into law. I think they are working on it. The bill is in parliament, but the bill it comprises of so many things apart from proportional representation itself, right? The only little fear is the fact that um, we get. Um, you get certain people like you do certain things at any time without looking at posterity. But if we are to look at posterity, then we will be very careful. But make sure say we carry on. Me, I don't I don't, I don't, I don't get too much problem with with the proportional representation. If only it was introduced earlier in 2018 or 2019 and 2020, then taking to the people for referendum for choose whether they want them or not. You understand? But that is not done. And because it is not done, it is against, you know, good governance. And mind you, especially the one that we get philanthropy and knowledge, for parenting about me being a politician, for not say, it, uh, it will get a negative impact, a negative effect. So far, so good. First past the post is the best so far. It's my own opinion. But I make I don't write a lot of articles in respect of uh, first past the post. In my arguments, we very open, not on the corner, but publicly at the talk. I'm a civil society activist. I choose for become a civil society activist. I can choose for become a politician, and, and I will be a very good politician as a matter of fact. You understand? But this is where I choose for make sure say and I look at educating citizens, you know, about their right duties, obligations, about democracy and other things. Other civil societies then get their own focus. Certain NGOs that get their own focus. But my own focus, they look at political activism, look at political activities, they address that. So one only for the myopic for actually um, uh, discern who Marcos Bangura is. Marcos Bangura is a good governance expert and somebody who promotes good governance as well. Then democratic accountability. Then we also look at electoral accountability. And we make a, a disciple focus on this thing more than because of electoral accountability. We fall within the purview or the mandate of Citizens Forum for Democratic Accountability, C4D for, for short. At C4D, we aspire to inspire and empower citizens to imbibe the ideals of democratic 
accountability, good governance, human rights, and national cohesion. So that is it, and that is what I have for you. Thank you. <laughs> Mark, Marcus, um, um, I can't say thank you. I can't say thank you enough. And of course, you don't hear really the sentiment of the audience. We appreciate your presence on the. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much from them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, this is spontaneous. This is organic, <laughs> not an organized thing. We're posting brilliant, and then they exhume that brilliance. Like you talk about the job way you they do, where some people and they kind of misconstrue that you do, you are an activist of some sense, like a civil society activist. So what do you they do? You they highlight the issues that are affecting the broader society, and in so doing, if now a government then a power, it can appear as if, of course, you have been critical because that's what you do. But that not means say yeah. you are political, but you can choose for be political if you want to, absolutely. But the need for draw the line between you being a civil society activist and a politician as if you are taking sides. I don't believe that you are taking sides. I believe that you are and just articulating. Sure. sure. One thing is, I discuss more on this because in the first place, it is my area of study. It is not the politics. It's my area of study, and that is where I choose to follow with my, my, my organization. You understand? So that is what we need to understand. You don't get somebody who will go study agriculture. If, if he come, you understand? They say they choose this part, it will be bad for him. You understand? I get a rich history in this. I studied it. I did it from secondary school up to university. I have lectured it. I have taught it. You understand? And I've written book on it. So as a result, why? I don't go help Sagal Unions for choose what is good for Sagal Union because there is a dichotomy between the two. And there is also conflicts, you know, interpretations and misinterpretations about first pass the post and proportional representation. And one thing about the aspects that we treat, they get pros and cons. All a man who can, he can't talk about a good aspect. I don't talk about the good aspects of first pass the post. And I don't talk about the minuses of proportional representation because, in my own opinion, right, it is not good. And because you know, good, that make the abandoner. For God's sake, ask yourself the question. It was adopted during the war in 1996, and it was done in 2002, and it was abandoned for 2012. And it was under the, the administration of Chijan Kaba, who was the president of Sierra Leone, and at the same time, he was representing the Sierra People's Party. And the system that always survived two times under the Sierra People's Party. Yeah. No understanding um, um, one final thing. It's like um, it was adopted, the PR system was adopted. In other words, the first past the post system is historically ours. But the first, I mean, the PR system was adopted after the war. Do we know why? During the war. During the war. During the war. The Do PR system why? was adopted during the war. And it was adopted because it was very difficult to reach certain areas in Sierra Leone and the rebels at that particular time occupied almost major towns and they were threatening short hand and long hand which means that you can be maimed if you say you will vote so the only way because certain areas we are hard to reach it was decided that we try the proportional representation system wherein we can use a small number of voters to actually get members of parliament that is why if you reflect to that period, you will agree with me that the number of people that voted, you know, was very small compared to now. But for now, we are at peace. And if the country is at peace, we are not at war. Why are people advocating for proportional representation? Once you advocate for that, you give rise to suspicion and distrust. As if there is something, you know, under the sleeves that you are keeping. But for short, that system was adopted because of the war. This was because of the war. We are okay, at the moment. Okay, okay, Marcus. We shall be that there's a possibility that there could be something up the sleeves. And that's why I ask you, within this short window of time earlier on in this brilliant, brilliant program, um, um, as to why there is all this forcing and fighting about changing a law that we already have. And um, even if we want to change it, 
this is a major generational issue. Why shouldn't we take it yeah. to the people in a kind of a referendum that the people should simple, be consulted simple. on the way forward? Yes. But we haven't if, if, yet. If, if, if the government has realized that the first pass the post system is not good for Sierra Leone, that would have been their responsibility to ensure that they take that particular issue to the people in the referendum for them to decide whether they want to continue with first pass the post system or to to change it for proportional representation. Marcus, I can cut I can cut this short. You cannot have nine months to elections when that is the system problem. that we had the system that we had is working. The country is stable. We are not in a state of war or anarchy or anything war, of the yes. kind that will warrant this sudden change. So the question belies, why now? That is it. And I will leave this. That's why I have emphatically that's why I emphatically use the word it will give rise to suspicion and distrust. Uh, because of the fact that we right. have less than one year and yet we are pushing it. What has um, influence the, 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 the question of bringing it down. Why in the first place the idea has not been brought up you know, since 2018? Remember, the European Union made recommendations after the 2018 elections. And some of these recommendations, in fact, have not been affected. The quota for women, the question of independent candidate contesting. You know, these are the issues that the European Union actually recommended. But so Marcos, not in example with that. Marcos, yeah. Marcos, I mean, there is so yeah. much to be to be said. That's why from the beginning of the program, I said no two days are the same. We can talk about an issue that occurred yesterday, today, but that might already be history because as we wake up tomorrow, there will be a new dinner oh, or design or menu on your plate. But I want for I want for express. My deepest gratitude to you. Yes. For well, let me just let me just say one thing. Let me just say one thing. <laughs> um, one last thing. I believe in. I believe in the progressive view of history. I'm a progressive person. History should be progressive. History should not be cyclical. You have some people who believe in the progressive view of history. You have others who believe in the cyclical view of history. Those who believe in the cyclical view of history call the view that. Once something has happened, it should happen again. It's in, in a cycle. And those who hold the progressive view of history believe that we should progress. So in that respect, the uh, proportional representation was adopted and used, but abandoned in, in, in 2002. So as a result of that, we, 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 we took to um, first past the post. In the progressive view of history, let's continue with first past the post system. Let us not be cycling. Continue cycling, uh, cycling, there will be no progression or retrogression. I think that should be enough now. <laughs> I am really excited and finally, you must be able to me and say, well, you know, it's enough is enough. But again, um, um, yes. um, Marcos, um, massive respect. I doff my heart, you know, yeah, off to you, brother. Um, really do appreciate you. You know, yeah, your time on the platform tonight. It's been historical, it's been educative, full of perspective, and full of, you know, yeah, um, 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 full of um, um, algorithms. And when I say algorithms, people they need to go look back and understand what they ex exceptionally mean. Exactly. And full of statistics yeah. and data. And this is where we went. We yeah. touch on every aspect of it. And Marcus, as usual, it's been another day on the dinner now. It's not a final curtain. You will be back because there is so much happening and we will get for bring you for can educate we with your perspective again. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. If I be not say in the way it's similar pula, but when they are similar pulo. But I mean, they're not they're not really far away because I can give you a quick a quick breakdown. After all, um, no, for that, no, let us do. No, let us do. Yes, in Europe, in Europe, in Europe, Marcos. Um, I'm AC Milan and then Barcelona, but in England, it's Arsenal. I mm. love Arsenal. Oh, well, well, yeah. a history. We are better together. Yes. <laughs> a we are better together. The Christopher, yes. the Christopher, we read the Thierry Henry, and we can go on and on mm. and on. 
But thank you for the yeah. light-hearted moment as at this point. Okay. But thank you. Thank you. We don't come thank to you. the end of this brilliant program. We'll not forget for tuning tomorrow. We've got Femi Claudius Cole. She's going to be right here on this platform. So my best advice is don't touch that dial. On Saturday, we get Logos Koroma will be on this platform. He's spoken so much far less than everybody else since they were ousted from power back in 2018. That is so much to say. And the brilliant Superman will be covering that program and touching and firing on all cylinders. For tonight, we have the ever brilliant, evergreen Marcus Bangura. We help we for understand so much. But Thank you very so far, much. We come to the end of it. Every beginning has got an end. Every end has got a beginning, but this is the end of tonight's program. And I want to say thank you very much to all the one that we tune in. Don't forget for tuning in again tomorrow and good night.